My name is Manny Ortiz, AKA the Walmart Drake. I've been a Sony user for four years exclusively. And it's the first time getting my hands on the Canon EOS R. Um, this camera doesn't have all the bells and whistles. I mean, matter of fact, I feel like if Canon was my mom, she'd be like, Manuel, you need to just relax, okay? And just be grateful for what you have. Don't worry about what everyone else has. That is what I feel like Canon is telling me when I'm holding this camera in my hand. All jokes aside, I'm gonna tell you some of the pros and cons of using this camera as a Sony user. But first, let me show you some pictures that I got with this bad boy. All right. Stand right between those yellow things. Right there, good, right there. You wanna... Let me see, raise your hand up, cause I don't know if the lights, I don't know if the lights any good. Yeah, cause you got uh, like dark shadows on your face. Let me see, turn this way. Even after watching this part on the computer, I still don't understand why I told her to raise her hand, but um, what I'm trying to do here is trying to find the most flattering light possible. That's why I'm having her turn around. For this shot, I'm gonna compose my shot based on the background blur. This is why I love having an EVF. I can preview my shot and let me show you what I'm talking about. So you see, I'm composing my shot based on that bokeh back there. And I'm gonna lower the camera a little bit. This is, yeah, shooting from a lower angle. I want, I want you guys to see this. So take a step forward, forward, forward. Sorry. Fine. Um, okay, go back there. Good. Yeah, I'm putting that bokeh right next to her face. Good. Oh, I like this. So we're testing out the EOS R, like I said, and I'm gonna give you guys a real world perspective on this camera, not a spec sheet reading. You know what I mean? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know what it's like to actually use it. Stand um, a little bit to your left. I'm gonna have you in between those lights. Beautiful. I'll tell you right now, this camera is really comfortable to hold. Hey boo, I see you. Shooting all these images at f1.2, because why not? Okay, one, two. Right now we just got a couple shots in and now we're gonna go to uh, upstairs, right? Top floor. Let me show you some of these images. Even battery, so. There it goes. Pretty good. Hey, I'll see you too. <laughs> just stop talking, baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or am I getting extra ratchet? Yeah. Yeah. Damn, baby, looking really good today, though. I have to say, looking really good. Woo! There you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Elevator picture. Oh, I'm shooting. It's too tight. <laughs> shooting with 85 doesn't work out. <laughs> hey, look what it is. Skydive. It's the Willis Tower, AKA Sears Same Tower. Time. Um, we got a top of a parking lot. Not what I thought it would be. It's not like the circuit, the the, the other ones, you know. But yeah, go ahead and sit right there. I need a boost. You got a big strong man right oh, here, baby. Shit. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easy work. Easy work. <laughs> oh man, you should have. We should have gone farther down because this pole's right here. Oh my god. No. Right there's fine. Right in the <laughs> Oh my god, you're ah! <laughs> That was a setup. You set me up there and I got freaking mesh shoes on. <laughs> Let's see. Like just like that's fine. One, two, three, good. First thoughts, I think. I, I really like how the camera feels in the hand. Eye autofocus seems to work only when you're close up and when you when you back up, it's, it turns into facial recognition, which is not always the most, it's not always the most accurate because, especially when you're shooting at f1.2, it's like, shooting at f1.2, it's tricky with face, you know? Because you might be focusing on the nose or the, just not the eye. So that's kind of tricky for me, but. Uh, I guess we're gonna have to see when uh, we post these images. Composition, I like the gap here. I think that'll add some depth to the picture. So, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good. Yeah, keep doing your thing. After using a Canon EOS R, I feel like a spoiled little brat <laughs> because I'm always after the camera with the best features and with this and that and it has to have everything up to date. As a Sony user, I really enjoyed using the Canon EOS R. I actually enjoyed it more than I thought because in my opinion, this is one of the more disappointing cameras uh, to be released in 2018 because we expected more. But then again, it's like Canon's always crippling their cameras, right? <laughs> so so it, was, it wasn't like a massive surprise, but still I was disappointed. In the real world, it performed really well. Let me talk about some of the pros and cons of the camera. Now, the, the biggest thing is the ease of use. The menu system is like, it feels, I feel like they built in Rosetta Stone in here. <laughs> like it's so easy to use. Um, I tell you what, Sony needs a little Rosetta Stone in their life because the menu system in the Sony is not great. It's not. The menu system on here is really good. Um, the touchscreen is, this is like what all touchscreens need to be like. It's super intuitive. You can use it to go through the menu. You can pinch and zoom into photos uh, when you're reviewing them. It's a really good touchscreen. Also, it has a flip screen. It's great for YouTuber like me. It's great for vid doing video and things like that. Um, another thing I really like about the Canon USR is this little mechanism inside. So when you take off your lens off a mirrorless camera, your, the sensor is usually exposed like on the Sony, on the Nikon, on the Fuji. This is the only camera to have this shade, this thing here blocking the sensor so that dust doesn't get on it. That is freaking genius. Canon, if you could only innovate and let it spread throughout the, the rest of the camera, <laughs> this is actually really smart. I hope everyone else implements that in their camera. Another thing I really, really like is the autofocus on this camera. All the pictures that I took were in perfect focus, shooting with an f1.2 lens. On top of that, I was using an adapted lens. And the adapter on here makes this cam makes that lens work like a native lens. And I used to shoot Canon before with the Fighting Mark III, and I was getting the same kind of performance. I mean, it, it was really impressive. The eye autofocus, you know, you know I love eye autofocus. It works only in single point, it doesn't work in continuous, which is like the biggest problem for me. But when you're using a single point, it works when, you work, when you're shooting up close, when you back up, it doesn't work. It goes back to facial recognition, but the facial recognition is really, really good. So, I mean, I can comp I could compromise there a little bit, you know what I mean? The camera feels so damn good in the hand. The Sony does not feel this good. The pinky starts to like come off the bottom, you know what I mean? Um, if you are a Sony shooter, you can buy this. Oh, here it goes. This is a grip extension. Thank me later. It's like $50. It goes on the bottom of the grip like this, and it extends the grip on the on the Sony. And that will make the experience of holding a Sony camera much, much better. This camera is probably the best camera to hold from all the mirrorless cameras other than the Z6. But the Z6, I mean, they're neck to neck. It feels This camera feels great in the hand. Now, some of the things that I didn't like about using the Canon EOS R, the biggest one, is back here. See this little touch bar thing? I mean, you would think they would learn from Apple that these little touch bar things are just gimmicks. This is an absolute, this is a big gimmick. This tells me that this is not a professional level camera, okay? Because professionals, we need, we need joysticks. So Canon wants you to use the screen as like the autofocus pad. So you can move your thumb around and you will change your focus point. So I made the bottom right corner my focus area so like I can change my focus point using this area. And what would happen is as I'm changing my focus point, my, my finger would come off the shutter button to reach all the way toward the middle and my finger would come off the shutter button. I didn't like that. It's not intuitive. The sh this needs to, there needs to be a joystick here so I can keep my finger on the shutter button while changing my focusing points. Please, Canon, thank you. Another thing that I didn't like about it is not, it doesn't have image stabilization built in. I don't know why, because everyone else has it except Fuji, but the Canon, it's a big body. They should have been able to do it. And the reason why I say that is because all the shots that I, almost all the shots that I took in the parking lot with Diana in the beginning of the video, they were all blurry, or most of them were blurry because I was shooting at 1 60th of a second ISO 800. If I was shooting with a Sony, shooting at 1 60th of a second, 
I mean, it didn't help that I was holding a GoPro and shooting like this, right? I was kind of jittery with this hand. But with a Sony, I wouldn't have got those blurry shots. I've done it many times shooting at 85. I don't get blurry shots because of the image stabilization. But yeah, that's kind of disappointing. But then again, that was kind of my user error on my part. You know what I mean? Because I should have known that and I have to compensate by raising my shutter speed and then raising my ISO a little bit, even though I'm introducing a little more noise. It, you got to do what you got to do. So at the end of the day, that's not a deal breaker. You just got to adjust to you know not having IBIS built in the camera. But with that said, I think the biggest incentive of going with the EOS R is having those amazing lenses at your disposal. Now they're coming out with the RF line of lenses and they're super impressive so far. We got the 51 II, we got the 28 to 70 F2, which is one of its kind. Then we've got a bunch of other lenses, the 15 to 35, 24 70, 70 200. So the lenses is the reason why I would even consider a Canon at this point. Uh, I hope that the next the pro version of this has a joystick, has IBIS built in, and yeah, they're gonna kill it. But overall, I enjoyed the process. I could see why people wanna use this camera. It just, it, it doesn't spoil you with a bunch of features. You just gotta, you just use it, and you get, you can get some great pictures out of it. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, coming from a Sony user's perspective, I wouldn't buy it only because of the joystick. If it had a joystick, I think I could see myself purchasing a camera like this to access those awesome RF lenses that are gonna be coming out. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Nikon Z6 coming up.